Ladies and gentlemen, hello, welcome back to another episode of Nerf Combos on my channel. My name is Luke Triton, and today we are covering the Scravenger. This is a lever action rifle in the Zombie Strike line. It is quite tactical. It has two tactical rails, one on the top, one on the bottom, a barrel, and a stock attachment point. So there's a lot we can do with this blaster. Now we look at the three traditional classes, heavy, close quarters, and long range. We will then look at my personal combo and any gimmicks after that. But before we do, we have a rule on this series. Whenever Nerf releases a kit with two or more attachments, I dub it Nerf's official combo. I probably should have done this as a separate take and put the attachments on during that point, but you know, I've already started so I may as well finish. This comes with four attachments and looks something like this. It is quite spectacular. And I do love how more and more nerf kits are coming up with more attachments, that means there's more variety, more choice. And whilst these do look cool, these are kind of limited to the Zombie Strike line given their looks and their feel to it. But yeah, really good. So let's start off with the Heavy. And the Heavy combo looks something like this. This is definitely an interesting setup and I could definitely make this more aggressive, but I'm saving that for later on. So we have the spike tooth barrel at the front from the Zoom and Doom kit, and I think this is one of my new favourite barrels because I made a custom version of this before I acquired this one, and I've kind of fallen in love with it because it's very playful and it's you know it's cool you know like nuts it. We got two shields. We have the stampede shield. We have the modular shield for that zombie blood protection. This is a zombie strike blaster after all, so you know blood protection is needed. The magazine I'm going for is the 30 dot drum from the Infamous. Traditionally, I'll go for the largest one I have, and in this case, I do have the 35 dot drum from the Raider. But anything offset is a bit weird. Now, you can't really hold this in a way where it's comfortable because of the weird ergonomics of this blaster. And you kind of need to hold the drum magazine in this case. And if you have anything offset, it could hurt your wrist, so something balanced like this one or the 25 dot drum could work a lot better. We're going to be keeping the stock from the Scavenger as well because of the backup blaster and it is well suited to this sort of... What's the word I'm like? It's comfortable basically, that's what I'm trying to say. You're not really aiming down sights but it's definitely one of the better stocks to use with this blaster. So all in all, this is my heavy combo. The next combo is Close Quarters. This is a bit of a no-nonsense build and I actually quite like this one. So we have, let's start with the back this time, this is the stock that comes with the Raider. It's just a stock, nothing else. There's no cheat crest, there's no sort of sight alignment help. It's just there as a stock, nothing else. And I think that works really well with the sight I chose as well. This is the flip stock, uh, flip sight, I should say, that comes with the Modulus Ultimate Customizer Kit. It is a reskin of the Long Strike flip sight, so if you have that one, you may as well just use that instead. But I think this is a better choice than something like the Red Dot sight because of its alignment. I think if I fold this back down again, it's actually a little bit better to use it folded downwards, especially with how this is sitting in your shoulder and where it's all lining up. Nerf blasters are never going to be accurate, but this carry handle has lifted this sight even further, which makes it even less accurate, so something like this I think is much better to use. At the front we have the Spectre Barrel, which is a very cool barrel, enough said. And of course we have a torch to help us in the dark. So yeah, this is quite interesting. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. The magazine of choice is the 18 Dart magazine. It is probably a better choice to use a larger magazine because this is a slow firing blaster. So yeah, whilst you're going around, you can definitely tag some enemies and get, a good, uh, get the job done in a good amount of time. Hopefully, if you do it well enough, you shouldn't need to reload because again, this is a slow firing blaster. And with all of this set up, this is my close quarters combo. And now we come to... Long range, and I'm amazed I've been able to fit this on camera. Good God, look at this. Talk about long range, that is a very lengthy blaster. So I'm going to start at the front this time. I have the stealth barrel connected to the two barrels that come with the regulator. Yeah, I don't use these often, and that's basically why I've got this. Nice lengthy barrel, kind of looks good on its own. I'm not going to be attaching anything to these barrels, so may as well just use them. I've got the modulus bipod that can't actually fold all the way down because it gets in the way of the blaster. So I may as well just keep them folded out like that. I have the scope that comes with the scavenger, it's an option I'm not going to be using very often so I may as well just try and use it here. And I have the stock that comes with the nail biter, zoom and doom kit, again this is something different. And for something like this I actually found this really comfortable and really useful. On the other side it is a dart holder, never going to really use it but again it's nice to have it there. Now whilst I'm holding all of this it is very awkward to try and look down the side because it's such a long way from where my shoulder is. And in particular I've gone with... 
Six dark magazines. Yeah, so I've got one in there and one in the magazine holder that is attached to the scope. Now, I would never ever run a six dark magazine. Why would you? I mean, we've got tens, we've got twelves, we've got drum magazines now, for goodness sakes. But again, I've said this a number of times in this video and in the review video as well, this is a slow firing blaster. Chances are you're not going to have enough time to go through a 10 or 12 dart magazine, even an 18 dart magazine that I showed earlier. So I think 6 is definitely more appropriate for something long range. And it looks quite good, honestly, for what this is, that's not a bad looking rifle. This is my long range combo. And now we move on to my personal combo. So this is a very interesting blaster, and I wasn't quite sure how I was going to use this. It's definitely not something you can use at close quarters because it takes a while to prime the blaster and use it. Yes, slam fire is a thing, but even then that's still quite slow compared to something that's pump action, for example. So I think this would be much better for a long range sort of role. And I think it definitely looks the part. Not quite as much as it did in the previous combo, but I think nonetheless this looks quite cool. So we have the stock that comes with the scavenger. The backup blaster is always really good, and... I think for the role that I would kind of use it for, this is most comfortable and I think it works really well. I'm using the 25 dart drum instead of the 30 dart drum because it's a little bit smaller. Yes, there's no starts, but I don't see a reason to run any more than the 25 darts that you get in a drum like this. Very compact as well, very good. The modulus long range scope because of course it's a long range blaster, I may as well just add that on there. I've got the stealth barrel as well just to put something on the barrel option. And I have the torch there at the bottom. So I'm going to have to grip the drum like this in order to use it. But for what this is, I'm actually really liking this. This is definitely something I can see myself using in a, uh, in a couple of Nerf Wars. But not too often, again because of the unconventional nature of this blaster. But nonetheless, this is my personal combo. And now I only have one gimmick for you today, and this is quite funky and very flavourful indeed. We've had close quarters, now it's time for very close quarters. This takes three zombie strike attachments and they are all melee focused and I think that's brilliant. Once again we have the spike tooth barrel from the zoom and doom kit which is one of my new favourite barrels. We have the the twin slice disc flying doiggy thing. Yeah this is definitely very cool I can see this coming on to some more personal combos in the future. This is a very cool attachment indeed. And at the back we have the chop stop. This is a very lengthy stock, so I'm going to have to use it in the closed position. But yeah, if once you run out of darts, it's not going to matter. You're not going to need any more darts. You could just poke them, fucking flick them like that, throw your disc at them. That's pretty cool. The magazine that I'm using is the 12 dart zombie strike magazine, just because these are the only zombie strike magazines that I own. But yeah, if I try and get this all in frame, it's really weird. I mean, it's... It looks so good though, that's the stupid thing about it. It doesn't really work in its own way because you have to get up close and personal with it, but that's the point. It's stupid, it's fun, I love it so much and I hate it because I'm never going to use it. This is very close quarter. So there we go, that is the end of another combos episode on my channel. This was a very fun one, whilst I got the blaster next to me here. It's interesting to look back at those combos and there's some I can definitely see myself using, as I kind of do with every combos episode. Some stick out and some kind of end up to be stinkers, but it's all fun nonetheless. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all ever so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next episode. Bye.